Have you ever bought lottery tickets or do you have insurance? Or have you ever taken a bet where you only have a small chance of winning? All of these questions have one thing in common, extreme probabilities. In this video, I'll be explaining some human biases when making decisions that involve extreme probabilities and the potential costs that come with this. The purpose is to help you understand where these biases have appeared in your own decision making. Before we jump into the biases, we need to first understand expected value. You can think of expected value as the expected average winnings of a gamble. Let's start with a quick game. With the next coin toss, if it's heads, I'll give you $100. If it's tails, you give me 20. Have a think about if you would take this bet. This might feel like a very unbalanced gamble, and it is. Whether consciously or not, you probably have this feeling based on two factors, the potential outcomes and the likelihood of each outcome. In this example, the possible outcomes are win 100 or lose 20, and the probability of each outcome is 50-50. Because the odds are equal and the amount you stand to win is much higher than the amount you will lose, you might perceive this as a worthy bet. One way to describe this using numbers is using expected value. The mathematical way to calculate expected value is the average of its outcomes, each weighted by its probability. So the expected value here is 50% times $100, plus 50% times minus $20, which gives us $40. This means that if you keep up this gamble, you should expect to win on average $40 for each game we play. But just because the expected value is positive, in other words, you should expect to win in this game, doesn't mean that everyone would have taken the bet, did you? That's where our own individual risk appetite and some biases come into play. Now let's take a look at how we base our decision making when dealing with extreme probabilities. In each of the four examples below, your chances of winning $1 million improves by 5%. Are you equally happy in each case? So we have from 0 to 5%, from 5% to 10%, 60 to 65%, and 95 to 100%. Most people would agree that going from 0 to 5% and 95 to 100% would be the most impressive. But why is this? The probability goes up by an equal amount, and according to utility theory, a theory used in economics that predicts how people make decisions, it says we should be indifferent to all four choices. But clearly that's not how we perceive it psychologically. So what's happening? Going from 0 to 5% is a change of state from impossibility to hope of winning. This is the possibility effect. Highly unlikely outcomes are given more weight than it deserves. In other words, we tend to overestimate its chance of occurring. An example of this is people buying lots of lottery tickets, spending much more than the expected value for a very small chance to win. This is seen as a large difference compared to no ticket at all, due to factors like overconfidence and the vivid dreams of winning. When in fact, even with a ticket, the probability of winning is basically zero. Highlighted by this example, when faced with low probabilities and high potential winnings, people tend to take the gamble. Here, people are risk seekers. A change from 5 to 10%, although represents a doubling in your chances of winning, the psychological value does not double. Similarly, 60 to 65% is also viewed as a small change. 95 to 100% again is a change in state, this time from possibility to certainty. Let's use another example to highlight this. Let's say you're facing a lawsuit where you have a strong case and will be awarded $1 million. Your lawyer then informs you that there's a small chance you will lose and receive nothing. Or you can settle now for a sure sum of 900,000. Let's also say your chances of winning are 95%. Would you take a gamble or accept the settlement? If you're like most people, you would accept the lower settlement. Because you are not taking the gamble, this is a risk averse approach. But why do we do this? Your expected value here is 950,000, 50,000 higher than the sure sum. This is due to the certainty effect. There is an attraction of a sure substantial gain and there is a fear of disappointment and regret if you take the gamble and lose in court. So what's happening here is that people tend to assign a lower probability relative to the actual certainty. In other words, people will pay more to purchase a peace of mind. Notice that we've just constructed a set of guidelines for what people would do if they were faced with both high and low chances of winning. But what about losses? Let's say you just bought a new Tesla. You know the chances of you totaling your car is very low, but the risk is there nonetheless. 
If you total your car, you will have to buy a new car. Let's just say for the sake of this example, a new Tesla would cost you 100,000 and the probability of you totaling your car is a mere 5%. The alternative is you buy insurance, which costs 10K. What would you do? Most people here would take a sensible approach and simply pay for insurance. But again, note that you are paying much higher than the expected value. Notice that this is the possibility effect. You perceive the low probability of totaling your car as being higher than it is. You are afraid of a large loss. Notice here that when faced with an unlikely loss, people are likely to be risk adverse. This is one of the reasons why people pay for insurance or why you bought Apple Care to cover your iPhone. Now let's look at a situation where you are faced with a near certain loss. Imagine you are playing Tetris with a friend. You suck at this game and your friend beats you 95% of the time. And so far, you owe them five dinners. Your friends offer you one last chance where, if you lose, you owe them an additional meal. But if you win, you can wipe your slate clean and owe them nothing. Would you take the bet here or leave it at five meals? There are two factors at play here. The diminishing effect, where there is a diminishing sensitivity to both gains and losses. For example, the first bite of the ice cream is always more satisfying than the second and so on. And the certainty effect. You perceive the 95% a highly likely chance of losing as smaller than it is. There's this enticing hope of complete relief. Both of these factors push you to take the gamble instead of taking the short loss. This dangerous combination to lead to disastrous outcomes. Instead of taking the short loss, people in this situation will sometimes be urged to go all in and take the gamble. Throughout history, the losing side in wars have fought long after victory for the opposition is certain. Companies that have been superseded, instead of cutting their losses, would instead invest in new technology in a futile attempt to make back some of their losses. Now that we've covered all four scenarios, let's combine it into one table. In Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, he calls this the fourfold pattern. This table summarizes what people would do when faced with either low or high probabilities of gains or losses. At the top left, we have the high probability of winning. An example of this are court settlements, where individuals tend to settle with a sure amount instead of risking it in court. At the top right, we have high probability of losing. Here, there's a small hope that people can avoid a large loss, and so they are pushed to go all in. Both of these are due to the certainty effect where the high likelihood is perceived as lower than it is. In the bottom left, we have low chance of a large win. The best example of this is people buying the lottery. Because they are partaking in the gamble, they are risk seekers. Finally, the bottom right contains low probability of a large loss. An example here is insurance, where people would purchase it for peace of mind. In this section, people are risk adverse. The bottom row can be explained using the possibility effect, where we tend to overestimate the low probability. When we make recurring decisions that deviate from expected values, these are likely to be costly. From the Tesla example, we know that if you're faced with a large, unlikely loss, it will be risk averse and settle for a short sum. This short sum is often lower than the expected value. Let's use one final example to exaggerate this difference. Company A is faced with 200 lawsuits a year. For each lawsuit, there's a 5% chance they will lose, which will cost them 1 mil. Suppose the settlement is 100k. The company can choose either to settle or go to court for all of the cases. Let's ignore legal costs here for simplicity. If the company chooses to go to court, then they will lose 5% of the 200 cases, which is 10 cases, uh, which will cost them a total of 10 mil. If the company settles all cases, it will cost 20 mil, 200 cases by 100k per settlement. The difference here is 10 mil, and the company is effectively paying this to avoid a small risk of a large loss. Clearly, this is very costly. So, although taking a risk averse approach is intuitive and feels right, deviations from expected value eventually leads to inferior outcomes. Next time you are making a decision or an argument to persuade others, think about if the possibility effect or the certainty effect could influence the decision.